Hello everyone, welcome to Log Log USA, the channel that brings all the legal news and legal information that is most relevant to you. Today I have a special guest, Mr. Sazendui. Thank you so much for availing yourself there. I know you are very busy, especially covering up your work that uh, you were able to do due to COVID-19. I understand. Thank you so much. No problem. It's it's a privilege to be here. Yeah. Uh, can you please introduce yourself? Just give us, tell us who is Sazendui and perhaps give us a brief professional background sure uh, so yeah, as you've said my name is Sazi Tuli I'm far as law goes my journey started at Rhodes University uh, in 2011 and and it from there went I did my art leave is where we met Zach and then after that, I went the non-traditional route and joined a company called K-based law firm, but we operate more like a flexible tech company uh, than we do a traditional law firm. So I mainly do contracts and uh, doing service agreements for in the finance and media spaces. Uh, but also now uh, getting to speed with uh, cloud contracts is, is, is my game. Yeah, okay. Oh, I like the, the fact you mentioned that um, the non-traditional uh, route, because that's the business of the day, alternative legal services. Can you explain to us what is the difference between traditional law firms and uh, alternative legal services? So traditional uh, legal services, I think we all have a, a good picture of what they are, um, I could say, I could set it out in a pyramid where at the bottom you could say it's your support staff and then your candidates and then have your partners. Um, and that's been the structure uh, of a law firm uh, essentially for, for more than a hundred years now. And uh, they charge by the hour, even by the minute, and that's essentially been what a traditional law firm has been for the past hundred years. 20, maybe even longer years, is uh, specialized legal services uh, firms or specialized legal services companies do. But because they specialize in that work, they're able to cut down on costs and many of them don't charge by the hour. Uh, and they're able to. Uh, so for example, you might have uh, a, an alternative legal structure which provides research service firm, or you might have an alternative legal service provider that provides uh, just a compliance of firm is doing. So essentially, I, I don't like to see traditional law, for, traditional law firms and ALSPs as against each other, but it's more just there are two different types of entities all within one ecosystem of, of legal services providers, alternative legal services providers, more specialized work, and they're more designed for specific work, whereas the traditional law Um, and I, I was coming to that issue of what is the relationship between traditional law firms and alternative legal services, whether it's a competitive or it's collaborative, because I also that uh, some law firms do also give you work as alternative legal services. So how would you describe the relationship just in general? I'd say it's, it's both, uh, you know, to varying extents. I would like to think though that it's more cooperative in that, of course, uh, you know, an LSP and a traditional law firm might go for the same type of client, right? So it's competitive in that respect. An LSP uh, does specialized work and work that a traditional law firm might not be able to provide at cost, whatever cost is a client is comfortable with and with the speed and efficiency uh, that an LSP could provide it. But a law firm, let's say that's doing a, 
a merger and acquisition deal, right? They might outsource the compliance aspect specializes in compliance. Maybe this is an LSP that specializes in uh, figuring out different jurisdictions in order to, uh, to, to finalize a merger and acquisition. So it often might use that uh, specialist legal services provider. And of course, if they can save costs and time for their own client, then it means that they can charge, they can build their client less as well. That's a great clear description there. Thank you so much, bro. Um, in, in terms of the scope that um, alternative legal services companies offer, is they, are there any limitations or they are allowed to operate without any boundaries such as law firms? No, so <laughs> they're definitely not allowed to operate without bus. So, so these law firms are, are generally regulated by law societies or or similar type of structures in various jurisdictions, and you provide a specialized service. You don't need the, the general regulation, right, that a traditional law firm um, will, will require. So if you're providing something, if you're an LSP that provides, right, there's no particular regulation that you need. You don't need, in this country, you don't need law society regulation for that, right? But of course, if this is or uh, something that's uh, you know a highly regulated function then of course in, in different jurisdictions you may be subject okay so you mentioned something with regards to costs that maybe law firms can use the services of uh, alternative legal services for the purposes of saving costs maybe law firms in the near future to also save more costs they might establish like internal departments of uh, alternative services. So do you think in the near future would uh, alternative legal services still be relevant if considering um, the, that perspective? Yeah, I think I think they'll be very relevant. Uh, I think I think they'll be very relevant. In, in fact, from what I saw, uh, there's more of an appetite by clients to use ALSPs. Uh, because they're, they're more cost effective and uh, so for example if you if you're a client who has uh, who's doing a thousand contracts a year right you might go instead of you might now go to a contract management specialist legal services provider right because you, you save time and money like that because these give them contracts uh, so I, I think clients see that and, and they're starting to pick up on that. Uh, and they're also, uh, clients are becoming more options uh, in terms of legal services. Uh, so I think because there's a bigger appetite, the law firms are also interested, like you say, in, 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 in I wouldn't say LSPs, but they are, they are maybe purchasing LSPs to perform specific functions for clients. So for example, a firm recently that, uh, that provides legal services as well, that purchased a, an LSP just to help with the services provider. And because now this audit firm already has thousands of clients who will need document reviews, Right, they can just they've purchased that uh, legal services company at end time, um, and of course, at the end of the day, it's it's about saving money for the client. So we'll probably see a lot more of those structures in, in the near future. Who knows? Uh, but I think the market the market will grow, and the, in fact, I think the traditional law firm market is the one that we should be worried about. It's where they can't really get any bigger. Um, and so we might see that market, which is still an important market, by the way, shrink in size in the next 20 years. But but who's to say? Uh, it, it's unclear at this point. Estimation, I suppose. Um, since you've mentioned that a lot of um, alternative legal services focus on compliance, document reviews, as well as contracts and so forth, 
uh, you didn't mention litigation. So if someone perhaps an individual wants to pursue a career in alternative legal services, would you advise them to take the route of the country attorney being admitted and so forth, or legal qualification would be enough if they want to pursue a career in just alternative legal services? That's a good question. So it's, it's a tough one and it really depends on, on the person themselves and then and knowing how uh, knowing how precarious the job market in South Africa is and how precari precarious our futures are. So you don't need you don't need to be to be admitted. You don't need articles to work at, at specific types of uh, I would always recommend that a student who wants to end up in the space and uh, goes through and does articles anyway, uh, just to just to put value in getting broad legal experience as a young legal uh, or as an aspiring legal professional. So what articles does is that it exposes you to how traditional law firms work. And there's a lot of value in that. Even if you do move on to an ALSP, uh, it's good to have that foundation, uh, I believe. Yeah. And that's the. I'm sure it comes in very really handy. Let's also decide, yeah. you know, make an informed decision in choosing whether you still want to proceed with uh, going to an ALSP. Exactly. Yeah. In terms of. Um, exactly. And uh, I'll, I'll just place it on the educational side. For instance, you mentioned the issue of particular SLAP um, specializing in whatever services they specialize in. So would you say perhaps a master's degree maybe in contracts and whatnot would actually give someone the advantage if they want to work with SLAP and specialize in that area? Yes, look, I'll never discourage people from studying further and, you know, uh, think things like that, master's degrees, they can help you get in the door and they can possibly help you when you're negotiating salary, um, although not too much, I, I don't think. I don't think, I don't think as a law firm who's just got their, as, as a law student who's just got their LLB, I, I don't think you should be thinking of it uh, just so you can work in alternative legal services, right? I think you can do an LLM if you have an interesting research question or maybe specific reason or you're interested in the topic of law or area of law, then I think you should do your LLM. But I think there's a lot of value in graduating, uh, getting a job and, and where it's moving and then make a decision based on that. Um, so you might decide, okay, I've now joined this LSP, we specialize in what type of research could help in, in, in my job, and now I can do my LLM. So I, I can't give advices to say which one is the right way. I, yeah, you don't, I don't, you don't need an LLM to, to practice, to practice, to practice any type of law, really. All right. Um, I noticed that um, traditional law firms do like things that you call such as vacation work and so forth. But uh, these companies that offer alternative legal services are very scarce. I didn't know they exist until I had a conversation with you the other day. So if perhaps a student wants to test waters and actually have a feel of what these companies do, while they are still a student, they right, undergo perhaps a vacation work, are such opportunities available? I think it, you know, opportunities are available, but but not law firms will have, like you say, they will have vacation work programs, and you know uh, they'll have specific times of the year where students can apply, and they can. But because this is such a, a new structure, there aren't many, if if any at all. I think I know one. There aren't many um, as in South Africa. Let's start there. But there aren't many LSPs who offer uh, vacation work programs specifically. But I always urge people to be not advertising for any position whatsoever. But if you like the type of work they do and you see yourself doing that type of work, uh, go to their website, find the email address, or go to LinkedIn, find people who work at that. I like to spend a week just sh shadowing uh, your lawyers. 
I just to see what you do because I want to be able to make a decision as to whether I'm really interested in what you have here. I, I don't think you need to wait for companies to advertise themselves to students. Uh, students should take the initiative themselves and believe me, um, and I've never seen, even when I was in traditional practice, I've never seen us turn down students who show that much initiative. But students who show initiative, it's, it's, always, it's always a plus, it's always a bonus. Well, no, thank you so much. Um, I found this conversation very informative, like I'm learning as we speak, yeah, and I'm sure everyone watches this will benefit and uh, make an important decision. You know, but obviously for me to do more research because uh, what you just shared is not exposed as traditional movement. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah. I I I fully I fully agree with that. I fully agree with that. And thank you so much for for having this discussion. Uh, so I I mean when we had the conversation the other day, it was the frustration I had is you know one of two channels in their careers it's either uh, these all these law schools are training you to be attorneys at traditional law firms or advocates or, or clients of those traditional law firms and that is that for me is a limited view of the opportunities in the legal space of course now with globalization and the adoption of remote work those types of opportunities will only grow in the future. Uh, so South African traditional law firms um, and traditional law firm setups, but they should be looking all over the world for opportunities within law and what they feel they, they can, uh, the opportunities are opening up. So I would urge anyone who's thinking of a life outside of traditional law to do some more research and you'll be shocked. Yeah, thank you so much, bro. Um, I guess we have to end it here. Thank you so much, Bob, for sharing this. This is very insightful. Yeah, no problem. No problem.